Yellow, hello, bello, jello. Okay. <coughs> so, Phil Jackson has started fucking Jeannie Buss again, and now he has her ear. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, since he has Jeannie Buss's ear, she is now leaning on him. <laughs> leaning on him to get some ideas on what to do with the coaching debacle now that they fired Frank Vogel. They gotta know what to do with uh they need to know they need to know what to do with the coaching search. And you know, it's a good thing that Jeannie Buss is listening to Phil Jackson again. You know? Because who is she listening to? Kurt fucking Rambus, who was sitting there in, in meetings giving Frank Vogel shit. Who else are you listening to? Rob fucking Palenka, who has proven nothing since he's gotten the job? She hasn't gotten any, any good advice from anybody where it seems like, you know, that was a good idea. You know, when they got that championship, LeBron was already coming to the Lakers. Everyone knew that. So no one in that organization had to do anything for that. No one in the organization got Anthony Davis there. That was LeBron. You know, even the bad decisions, that's one thing they, they can duck. But then again, it's their decision for letting LeBron make that fucking decision to bring Russell Westbrook. And we see how that shit turned out. So nothing they have done, nothing they have done has shown to be any good decisions for a while, for a while. I mean, Jesus Christ, they were a horrible team before LeBron got there. I mean, Jesus, they've been a dumpster fire. Signing, resigning Kobe and letting Kobe pretty much destroy the Lakers. They've been a dumpster fire for, for, <laughs> for oh, well over a decade. Well over a decade. And the only piece of light that they've had was LeBron winning that bubble championship. Thank God they got lucky with that. Thank God they got lucky with that. So, with that said, we're going to listen to a segment about Phil Jackson wanting to trade LeBron. And finding a new coach, I'm going to let them blither, and I'll comment when I see fit. Back here with Rick Buecher. We're talking LeBron and the Lakers. What do you do to fix what happened this season? Well, according to L.A. Con- Listen, trade LeBron, release Westbrook, trade Anthony Davis. That's what I say. Listen, Bill Blatchke, he's hearing the solution might be not to fix LeBron and the Lakers, but to remove LeBron from the Lakers. That is if Phil Jackson gets his way. Here's what he said on the dub. I mean, it's an obvious. I, see, the only reason this is news in in sports media is because LeBron James is their god. LeBron James is their god, and the media has been trying to low key usurp Michael Jordan as the goat to put forth that LeBron is one of the big greatest players of all time, which is fucking bullshit. Get the fuck out of here, man. Anyway, LeBron James is obviously the liberal media's god. And so that's why you can't say anything bad about LeBron. And how dare you? How dare you even talk about trading LeBron? Listen, man. LeBron's fucking, what, 39,000 years old? 38, 39 years old, man? He has one year left on the contract, and if you don't get anything for him, you're going to get fucking nothing, and you're not going to win with him next year. Do you guys think anybody's going to win? you think the Lakers are going to even get to the playoffs? you think they're going to get better? They can't make any fucking moves. The only, the best moves that they can do is trade LeBron and get some shit for him. They're going to get some, LeBron is one of the highest valued players, even if he's washed it, even if this is like, one of his last two years in the league. Because as soon as he passes Kareem, he's out of here. <laughs> he's out of here, man. He's done. But he can't bring you a championship anymore. So, the best thing to do is to trade him before he just leaves. He's going to leave you anyway. And you get nothing out of it. So, the time, the, honestly, the time to rebuild is now. And you have a chance to speed up that rebuilding if you trade LeBron. And in my opinion, you need to trade Anthony Davis, too. Just in my humble opinion, man. Because Anthony Davis has not played a whole season since he entered the NBA. He is going into his 30s now. And from the way you talk, you hear him talk, he doesn't think anything's wrong with his training. 
He just thinks that all these soft tissue injuries are unavoidable. Yes, the fuck they are, Anthony Davis. Have you tried once, I don't know, to reach out to maybe a track coach to learn how your weird-ass body can fucking land? Have you tried that? I bet you you haven't. You need to learn how to land, dude. You have a weird body. Your, 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 your knees are fucked. They're knock-kneed. Your arms are motherfucking... They just go in different ways. You have a bird chest. Like, your shoulders go in and out. It's just... You have a weird-shaped body, man. So you need to take extra steps. You have to take extra steps to learn how to land properly. To learn how to stretch, maybe, so you don't get these injuries. I bet you you don't do any of these things, but for some reason, you are steadfast on saying, there's nothing wrong with my training. Or, you know, I'm just fine the way I am. I'm Anthony Davis, even though I get hurt every goddamn year. There's nothing wrong with my training at all. And even though I'm going to my 30s, where my muscles are going to be less dexterous and they're going to be tightened up a little bit more than my early 30s, I mean, our early 20s, where I got hurt anyway, I don't have to change anything. Yes, the fuck you do, Anthony Davis. What are you talking about? All professional athletes have to do something different going to the 30s, man. I don't give a fuck what you are. As talented as you are, man, you are still a fucking human. And your body starts changing in the 30s, buddy. All players do. Michael Jordan did. Will Chamberlain did. Shaq didn't. You saw what happened to him. You saw what happened to him. James Harden stays at the strip club all the motherfucking time. Doesn't take care of his body. Look what happened to him. Look what happened to him. Look what happened to every last athlete of every last sport, man. It's just how it goes, bro. Like, even if you didn't get hurt, even if you played all 82 games every last uh, game of, of your life, man, you still would have to make some training changes because you're going into your fucking 30s, you idiot. What are you talking about? And you, of all people in the fucking NBA, are famous for having a fucking, um, of having a fucking injury problems. And it's putting down your trade value. It's going to fuck with your money in the long run, my friend. Do something different, my man. Admit that there's a problem and do something about it. I heard that they feel like LeBron Brown. Brown. I, Amen. I, I just heard it. But, but I've got, got no nothing to back, back that up. No, no all the records stuff like that. that up. But, but I, I think Phil, I do know that Phil would like, like to stay with keep Westbrook, Westbrook and try, and try to make it work for them. Why would you keep Westbrook? I would honestly rebuild and start a new culture, and I don't see how the fuck you do th unless Phil Jackson has like a no man. I'm sorry, it's I don't know. It doesn't matter if Phil Jackson has a conversation with Westbrook. It's, he's not going to change. I listened to Westbrook's exit interview, and that's another video y'all can check out called uh, "Everything Wrong with the Lakers and Westbrook." You should check it out. I go pretty deep on it, and I go in on Westbrook, but. Westbrook is the one of the most unaccountable, delusional superstars you could ever have. So I don't really know what Phil Jackson is thinking. I don't know what he's what he's seeing. But you can't move West. Maybe he's going behind the uh, the philosophy or the the truth. The fuck I'm talking about philosophy. The truth that you can't do anything with Westbrook. Nobody in the NBA wants him. Nobody in the NBA is going to take on Westbrook for forty seven million dollars. No one, not one fucking team, not one team. I mean, you might find a sucker. You might find a sucker, but I don't even think you're going to find a sucker for Westbrook. You're going to find a sucker. You're going to find plenty of suckers for LeBron. You're going to find plenty of them. Because worst come to shove, even if he isn't what he is, you're going to get a lot of money just for having LeBron on your, on your roster. It's going to sell tickets. After this season and the way the media did it, and obviously the whole NBA, because well, Westbrook's getting his ass whooped. The players were carrying the shit out of him. The play, he's obviously not that light. So even from a uh, from a ticket sales standpoint, I, 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 signing Westbrook is not it's not the trade off isn't worth it. It's not worth it. But you can get some shit for LeBron. So this is a great idea by Phil Jackson. When Stephen A. brought this shit up. I was like, good idea. <laughs> but, you know, you can't talk about your guy, LeBron James, so it is what it is. I don't want to be coming up. I'm going to be still thinking of him. And where that stands with LeBron, yeah. I don't think he loves LeBron. 
He doesn't love LeBron because LeBron doesn't take coaching well at all. LeBron doesn't do coaching. That's, you know what I mean? He gets rid of every, uh, every real, he tries to at least, get rid of every real coach that he's ever had. The only time he didn't succeed, and he really did try to succeed to get rid of Eric Spolcher, pulling those fucking fuck-ass antics, trying to, trying to bump Eric Spolcher and all that. That was fucking bullshit and immature. But that shit didn't fly because he had Pat Riley in Miami, and Pat Riley ran the show. And there was nothing he could do about it. And he played some of the best basketball in his career in Miami. Some of the best basketball in, of his career in Miami. He got to Cleveland. He had David Blatt. David Blatt was not a bad coach. David Blatt didn't go for that fuck shit that LeBron was on. And since he did not comply, they got rid of his ass. You know, LeBron James plays in the LeBron James program. The LeBron James system. I take that from uh, Chronicles of Judah. Check him out on YouTube. The LeBron James system is the way LeBron plays. He didn't play in a in a in a coaching. Do you, do anybody watch LeBron play and think, "Yo, this is a system that that he's running?" No. 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 LeBron James just uses his talent and uses his basketball IQ to try to eke out wins. And it's been productive in been winning basketball so far. Not anymore. He's too old to really keep that shit up, man. He's too old. He can score. But he's too old to really uh, win basketball games by himself anymore. So, yeah, if you're going to win basketball games, you're going to need a real coach. You're going to implement a real system, a real culture. <clears throat> and the culture that LeBron brings is uh, is toxic, to say the least. You know, the system that LeBron runs while playing the ball, let LeBron do his thing. And then, you know what I'm saying, other players are supposed to read his mind and he just kicks it out to shooters the whole time. That's just not going to fly anymore. He's not, the trade-off isn't worth it anymore. He can't win like that anymore. He's too old. He's too old. He can't do all that shit and then kick out the win, kick out the shooters and, and win anymore. He just can't do it. And he does not have a second superstar with him on top of that. Westbrook's not it. <laughs> Westbrook, Westbrook is too is too is too infatuated with getting triple doubles. You know, that's an addiction he can't kick. So with that said, you think he will work with Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis cannot stay healthy. And he's going into his thirties. It's just gonna get worse. But again, I think people overrule them on that. What you don't know that. Phil Jackson get some more uh, Cialis or Viagra and keep putting that thing on him. He might get his point across. Allegedly. Uh, you do not <laughs> do you know how the Lakers operate there's no way in hell they're going to get a non-Laker to give any ideas or even into the fold on that thing that's not how they operate the Lakers operate on magic energy magic energy and since they don't have magic anymore they go off that positive shit or some really toxic energy they did they rolled some toxic energy with with Kobe and they won they won at least two championships with Kobe you know but so far, since they have not had a premier star, yo, the decisions that the Lakers have had, counting since they've had Kobe, have been awful. The best decision that they've had on their end, and I think, uh, I don't think Jeannie Buss was even running the show then. It was her brother at that point. It was when they traded for Pau Gasol. That was one of the best moves, and they won two championships because they traded for Pau Gasol. But they were to put their, all their chips into Kobe. Kobe ran away almost every fucking free agent because nobody wanted to play with Kobe. Nobody wanted to play with Kobe. No one. You know, so if we really, really want to want to take a deep dive into it, the Lakers haven't had comp a competent decisions for what? Well over a decade. They have not had any competent decisions. They won the bubble championship because, hey, it was the bubble championship. You know, that was like a retarded version of the NBA. 
They didn't bring LeBron. No one in that organization brought LeBron. LeBron was coming to L.A. because the whole place was L.A. And he has, and his businesses have skyrocketed. And his net worth has almost doubled since he's entered, uh, since he's came to L.A. LeBron was coming to L.A. anyway. They didn't get Anthony Davis. LeBron brought Anthony Davis. So, any competent decisions coming from the L.A. Lakers brass hasn't been made since the middle, since like two years before Kobe retired. So, what are you going to do? What do you expect? What do you expect? Everybody Nick, I, I'm chomping to be here. I, I'm dying to know what your reaction is this. Well, it's like this specific interview was designed by an algorithm just to infuriate. Yeah, because anybody says anything about LeBron, you open your mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. You open your mouth and spit some bullshit every time somebody says something about LeBron. Why don't you take LeBron's dick out your ear? Huh? How about that, Nick, right? Take LeBron's dick out your ear. Because right when they got done talking about that, Doug and Flashy did a three-minute relitigation about how the 2020 Clippers were actually better than the Lakers. They were. How the Lakers wouldn't have beaten them and their championship doesn't count. If it weren't for the bubble, they, have, they would have not. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I just had to listen. He's right. It's about how Phil Jackson, Jackson is going to get overruled. Overruled? He's, he's not even any of the officially with the team. He's fucking the owner, man. They're overruled. He's got 13 championships. Way more than any champ anybody on that fucking brass. Come on now. Come on now. Who are you going to listen to? Kurt Rambis? I mean, what, what they've been doing hasn't been working f for well over a decade, man. They haven't made any competent decisions. Any competent decisions that point that franchise into good decisions. They got lucky. They're riding the coattails of Dr. Buss's... <laughs> I don't know, man. Dr. Buss was an amazing dude. And he ran off of magic energy, positive energy, intent energy. White magic. Until Kobe came to the fold, then they ran dark magic. But they got two, two championships from uh, Kobe and that dark magic. I don't count... Kobe's three championships with Shaq as him being a leader of those teams. Those are Shaq's championships. Those are Shaq's championships. But they did get two with Kobe. Yeah, you know what I mean? They beat the Celtics, which was a legit win, and then they beat Dwight Howard in the in the Magic. Shit be happening that just works out for the Lakers, man. And it and they've been riding on the coattails of Dr. Buss and Magic Johnson and Kareem. They've been riding that energy for a long time. They're what? What is a uh, what is uh that dude uh Jay will say? They're a legacy franchise, whatever that means. And then I have to listen to Phil. Phil, 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 Phil is saying, uh, you know, he, he doesn't really like LeBron. But you don't say. He did not say that. That's what somebody reported say saying on the fucking uh thing. But he probably doesn't like LeBron. LeBron does not accept coaching. And at this point, a 38-year-old LeBron not accepting coaching <laughs> just so your franchise <clears throat> can go down to shitter just because LeBron's on the team. Do you need to do that? No, man. Protect your franchise. Get rid of his ass. Get get some assets before you let him run his little horse show again for another year. And he's going to leave you and you're going to get nothing. And then you're going to be fucked for another couple more years. You, you, you mean Phil and LeBron might have a little bad but this isn't a basketball like you This is like walking. I've always said I ran into... Which you fail all the time, Nick. ...in an NFL team. One of the first things I would do, I was going to hire a head coach, I'd take you to a blackjack table and watch him play. I'm like, oh, you stay on 16? I'm not hiring you. Oh, you don't split eights? Get out of here. Like, some of these things are obvious. And if you watched the Lakers last year, Rick, you're like, hmm. Probably can only keep one guy. Should it be Russell Westbrook? You can't get rid of Russell Westbrook. It's common sense. You can't get rid of him. He's he's a forty-seven. He has a forty-seven million dollar contract, and no one's dumb enough to. T not one team. There's a lot of dumb teams that take a lot of gambles, but the only dumb team that does that is the Lakers. No one else is as dumb as the Lakers. 
No one else is dumb that's running the Lakers as Genie Buss. And a dumb uh, cadre of criminals. Criminals! Basketball criminals. And Kurt Rambis, Linda Rambis, and Rob Palenka. Yeah. You, know you know what? what? I, think I think we can make it work with Russ and, and just cut our losses with LeBron. That is weird. I would cut Russ to bring in a new culture. There's no way you're going to bring in a winning culture with Westbrook on the fucking team. He doesn't give a fuck about winning. You know, in his head, he acts like he's... He probably thinks he wants to win, but as long... He's not going to win and make his stats at the same time. And he'd rather fight to make his stats than to play winning basketball. All Russell Westbrook had to do this year was commit to defense, limit turnovers, take smarter shots. He's never going to fucking do any of that. Well, you're either two doors you can walk through. It's either a personal beef or you're a total honor idiot. So so I don't know y'all see this y'all see this y'all see this y'all see what nick wright says just for saying the most obvious choice obvious choice i've already explained it to you lebron's gonna lead the lakers he is 38 years old he scored 30 points a game and they couldn't make the fucking plan so how the fuck are they, what are you going to do with that? What, do you, what I mean, what do you want to do with that? Explain to me, what can you do with that? What can you do with LeBron staying on the team? Other than doing the best thing for your franchise and getting assets for LeBron before he fucking leaves you anyway. And you want to get nothing. You want to get nothing. I have an idea which one it is, but, but, but Ed, listen, I'm just glad Genie Boss is, is taking advice from... from from a 13 NBA, 13 time NBA champion. All right. He's one of the best coaches to ever live. Other Magic Johnson, her best friend Linda Rambis, her best friend's husband, Kurt Rambis, and her ex fiance. Her ex fiance is Phil Jackson. She needs to stop listening to all those other people, though. That usually is how the best business is. He's got a point. He's got a point. He's got a point. The fact that. You know, just the fact that Phil Jackson is her ex-boyfriend, it is a little bit nutty. Now, am I going to comment on that's what happens when you have a woman owning the team? No, that's not where I'm going to. That's not where I'm going to go. It's not where I'm going to go. I'll go there in another <laughs> in another video, though. I'll go there in another video. You know, because I could say that, but then you have men like James Dolan. Who acts like a bitch anyway? Who runs his franchise in the ground? So what are you gonna do? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since I am giving you advice, thank you. I'm giving you the smartest thing you say all day. This second, love and business. You don't mix them. Uh, uh, Genie, Genie, you're, you're bringing, bringing Phil Jackson, Jackson in, and, and I was okay with the idea that Phil Jackson, Jackson was going to advise you on who you were going to hire as your next coach. coach. I, I am not, not bringing him in to advise me on personnel or the structure of my roster. Fair enough. Because I've already seen that show in New York. And nah, dude, he was saddled with, Le with Carmelo, man. He could not do anything. New York, the New York Knicks were committed to keeping Carmelo Anthony as an option. Now, as time is told and the facts have told, Carmelo Anthony is a selfish superstar. You know, Phil Jackson, the way he coaches and the way he built, he, uh, he got championships was he was the one that convinced Kobe Bryant, one of the most selfish players ever played the game, that he needed to trust his teammates in order to win. He's the one that convinced Michael Jordan, who was averaging like what, like 35 points a game at one at one point before Phil came, that he needed to trust his teammates in order to win. He convinced those two of that, and they won because of that. So that's why he's not a fan of LeBron. He knows LeBron's not going for that shit. I don't know why he thinks Westbrook is going to go for that shit. That's a little bit weird. But when he was in New York, he was saddled with Carmelo Anthony. He could not get rid of Carmelo. 
I'm pretty sure he tried, but he, he they weren't. They at the end of the day, they weren't. At the end of the day, they weren't, or they weren't able to. So he had to try to win around Carmelo Anthony. And to be honest with you, once they got Chauncey Billups, they did have a a, a, a good a good run. They had one good run at it. But uh, no, that was when whatever. Listen, he had Carmelo Anthony. He couldn't do shit with the guy. All right. You can't win the championship with Carmelo Anthony as the number one option, and I think time has proven that. I know how well it didn't go, so I'm not but then again, when he says things like keep Westbrook, I don't know, dude. Maybe he's just not a good fucking GM. Going there. But, but all that said, I can, I can actually understand why someone would think, think man, man, it's too, too bad, bad we can't, can't trade, trade wrong. Yeah, release his ass. Thinking that. And then immediately going, yeah, but that's not reality, so let me get back to reality of what I'm dealing with because LeBron James isn't going anywhere, doesn't want to go anywhere. What what I don't don't it does not fucking matter. He doesn't have a no trade clause. Get him the fuck out of here. Your job is to make sure your franchise wins. Ain't that your job? Ain't that what you're supposed to do? You're not going to win with LeBron James on the motherfucking team. So what the fuck you supposed to do? Trade the guy so you can have some assets. I mean, what the fuck are we talking about? Other than you guys are sucking LeBron's dick. Logically, what the fuck are we talking about? Logically, you got to get rid of LeBron. You're not going to win any games with him. You didn't even get to the play-in with him. Come on now. Anthony Davis is getting older. And apparently, he has no interest in changing his training. In order so he can have a better chance of staying healthy throughout the year. So he can help his teammates. He is, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> other than this, some weird idolatry with LeBron James that you guys have. I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. It's common sense. Do is, I, don't I don't say it out loud. loud. And, I and I certainly don't say it out loud where, where someone like, like an LA, LA Times, Times columnist might, might hear it and, and repeat it and, and say, say, I don't have anything to back this up, up but this, this is, is what I've heard. heard. Because what does this do with, with Le for LeBron, LeBron James, James or as far as your relationship? Even LeBron wants to leave too. I don't know. Like, other than LeBron loves LA, if he wants to win another championship, he has a chance. You could trade LeBron for James Harden and get him with Joel Embiid. That would work. You guys might have a chance with uh with uh Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and uh and Anthony Davis. You might have a chance. That might work. With LeBron James. I'm sure LeBron wasn't happy from the start that Phil Jackson is being brought in as an advisor. That can't make him feel all that great. But now... LeBron hates coaches. Now you actually... Hence why they don't like each other. You're listening to Phil tell you, hey, you know what? Uh, we should maybe think about the... The Lakers are a dumpster fire, man. They've always been. He's not expendable. The reason that you want to trade him is the main reason because he's not expendable. It's a organizational chemistry issue that we have presented here. And, and, and I also love that the Bill doesn't say who he talked to, but he goes from saying, I heard this, to Jeannie and I were talking about this. I'm like, Bill, right. well, I don't know whether you intended to or not, but man. You had all fingers pointing towards Genie and saying, hey, you may not believe this, but Bill thinks that maybe we should move on from LeBron. It is a bad look all the way around. And it's the smartest thing to come out of the Lakers brass in a very long time. It makes their off-season challenges even greater. Rick, it's exhibit F. G, L, whatever you want to, how deep you want to go into the alphabet, that, that Phil Jackson, Jackson, the greatest coach in NBA history, should not be running a franchise in any way, shape, or form. All right, like, like you said, we already saw it, it. and you, you might say, well, you got to work for the Lakers, but like you said, his, his fingerprints are going to be all over this thing. And Jimmy's ass. We saw this happen in New York, and let me get specific. He 
he fired Mike Woodson a year after Woodson led the Knicks in the second round of the playoffs. That's the only time they've been there in two decades. All right. He, he replaced him with Derek Fisher, Fisher former player, player mistake. Replaced, replaced Fisher after fired him with, with Kurt Rambis, former a good, good friend, mistake. Whew. That was a mistake. Good. You're making some good points, Chris. I mean, yeah, you're making some good points. You might change my mind on this. Replace him with Jeff Hornacek. Mistake. We, we know the personnel, personnel decisions that were made. Mistakes, mistakes all around. around. And, and now, now here we go again. You're, you're choosing Russell Westbrook over LeBron? Yeah. No, trade LeBron because he's the only one you can get assets for. I don't know why you would try to work it around Russell Westbrook. What the fuck are you thinking? That does not make any sense. You can't get anything for Westbrook. Nobody wants him. I would release him. James, I would get it. I wouldn't agree, but if somebody said, you know, Phil's about to try Phil's about all And LeBron's a ball-dominant player. And you, and you can, can talk all you want about Jordan. Jordan shot a lot. He shot a ton. But he wasn't ball, ball dominant. Nobody, Nobody in that triangle was ball dominant. dominant. And, and if you said that, that okay, I, I wouldn't agree, but, but I would be like, like okay, logically, I get that. But, but then, then to say, yeah, yeah LeBron, LeBron can't fit, fit but, but Russell Westbrook can't. Exactly. Like, what in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, again, we don't know if he said this though. We do not know if he said this. This is just reported. We don't know if he said this, but that didn't make any sense to to try to make it work around Russell, a 33, 34 year old Westbrook. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm sorry, Westbrook. My bad. What? He's way more ball dominant than LeBron. He's, his basketball IQ is far lower than LeBron's. Yep. Like, what are we talking about? And, and that's, that's where, where the Knicks point, point it shows that this is personal, and Genie is letting that poison get into, into the franchise. franchise. It's been like that forever. There's no difference. <laughs> it's, it's just, just a mess. mess. I, I mean, my good, like, like Rick said, or, or Blasky said, said, hire somebody as your head basketball, basketball guy, guy and, and let, let him do it. it. Period. If, if it's Polinka, let Polinka do it and stop listening to the whistle. Polinka has not shown to be able to do anything. This is to me this is last season. We'll see what he does this season. I will say Rob Link has been given a pretty hard job <laughs> to say the least. Where even if he has all say so, it seems like the only thing Rob Link was successful in doing is convincing everybody that Magic Johnson doesn't work hard and that he needs to be fired. That's the only thing Rob Linka really has done and have a bad reputation around the league for being a sh piece of shit and a liar. Of all these other people out there, crazy, crazy. crazy. Okay, okay, so just for the sake of the discussion, and I'll throw this in there. Let's say that Phil Jackson is not 100% motivated by a personal beef with LeBron. Let's just just open up your eyes. Why would he have a personal beef with LeBron? He probably understands that LeBron does n is not receptive to coaching and understands that LeBron is 38, 39 years old and understands that he's cooked. He's done. All right. He's he's probably leaving L.A. after this year. Or at the least, you're not going to get any value. You're not going to get any wins from having LeBron on your team. So... And, and has coached some, some you know, know, three, three of the top, top ten great players, players of all time. So, so it feels, feels like he knows, knows some qualities and what, what it takes to coach a great player. player. And he's, he's saying LeBron should be moved. Do you, do you think, think it has anything to do with, with the fact, fact that next, next year we're talking about the reasons to keep LeBron? LeBron. I hear more, and for instance, this might just be media talk and leaks, about breaking Kareem's record in a Laker jersey. Then, then I, I do about winning, winning the championship. Booyah! Uh, well, you know, you know, I mean, the Laker jersey, breaks the record, it, it just doesn't feel like... like as soon as he breaks Kareem's record, he's gone. Shit is pointed in the right direction. And maybe Phil, obviously I'm just speculating, but maybe Phil sees that. Sees that. Maybe he goes, wow, we're, we're, we're like focused on the wrong thing as an organization. 
That has only been above 500 twice in the last year. It's only made the playoffs twice in the last year. So, I'm just wondering about the greater thinking exercise for you. If it's not the personal beef, what do you think it is? Well, I think it's the thinking exercise for you. If it's not the personal beef, what do you think it is? Nick's going to protect LeBron. I think Phil Jackson lost his fastball a decade ago. I think you want to there we go. Count championships and great players. Hey, Ron Arback is right on that list. I wouldn't want him coaching the Lakers or advising any of us either. But that's because he's been dead for a decade. Like, I mean, so what the fuck are you talking about, Nick? Like, stop it. They, there's a lot of all-time greats that, that are no longer know what they're doing. With all that said, nothing would thrill me more than if LeBron James got traded from this travesty of a franchise the Lakers turned in. I would be delighted. I'm not a Lakers fan. I want to watch the run. Then why are you saying, it's a, it's a, I mean, you're not bringing up any good points other than personal points. Because you like LeBron's dick in your ear and your mouth. James play big in and around your mouth. So I would love if this happened. But as my job, dripping in objectivity, I must... Dripping in LeBron's cum in and around your mouth, Nick. Call it as I see it. And if, and if you watch, watch the Lakers, Lakers you're like, I'm going to make it work. work. Run the triangle with, with Russell Westbrook. I don't, no one said that he wanted to run the triangle. I will grant it that Bill did try to implement the triangle on the Knicks. Which is pretty fucking stupid considering the landscape of the NBA and how the game is played today. That's pretty stupid. I ain't going to lie. But I don't think anyone said that. <laughs> this is this is when you look, don't let narrative overtake the truth. No one said that anyone's trying to run the triangle. No one said that Phil has a personal problem with LeBron. They're just saying that. Hey, 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 hey and we're, we're gonna move, move on, on from LeBron James. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, that, that makes, makes a lot of sense. sense. <sighs> Uh, it, look, it's going to be an interesting summer for the Lakers, however you look at it. Uh, let's get back to the playoffs where the Lakers currently do not. All right, yo. That's about it for Phil Jackson wanting to get rid of uh, LeBron. I want to see who he wants to bring in as a coach. That would be interesting. I don't think it's a good idea to keep LeBron, uh, keep Russell Westbrook. I think it's a pretty bad idea. So if, if there's any truth to this, I'll cover it later. If you like the video, let a nigga know how you feel. Put it in the comment. Like the video. Subscribe. It helps immensely. G4 Legend out.